Eccoci, uh, our next guest uh, is Sandra Campos. I think she's online, she's already connected. We're going to talk about the digital education in fashion. Hello, hello Sandra. Can you hear me? I don't hear you. Can you, can you please, because maybe your microf microphone is closed now. Maybe there's some microphone issue because we don't, uh, we can't hear you. The Microsoft, the, the, your microphone is on? Yeah. Maybe, can, could you please try to refresh the page? Maybe we get lucky. Okay, waiting for Sandra Campos to come back to come back. How about now? Oh, perfect. Now I can hear okay, you. Okay, great. <laughs> Just <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, Sandra Campos, let me introduce you because you have a, a very long and um, an interesting uh, <laughs> uh, biography. <laughs> Sandra Campos is, is a retail technology CEO, entrepreneur and retail executive. Throughout her career, she has built global lifestyle brands and has been instrumental in turnarounds, digital innovation, cultural marketing and international expansion. With her extensive experience in retail and fashion, she was appointed CEO of Project Vert, a retail tech and supply chain company whose solutions are operator built, cloud native, and uh, e commerce enriching. Firmly, firmly believing that digital acceleration is a strategic necessity, her leadership focuses on customer centered agile technology that simplifies scaling across demand channels and distributed logistics, including order management and warehouse management. As the former CEO of Diane von Furstenberg, Sandra is known to be an innovator whose focus on the implementation of omnichannel and unified commerce strategies enhance the consumer experience and make a significant impact to top line revenues. At DVF, DVF, DVF sorry, <laughs> she introduced community building marketing initiatives, established collaborations with female funded brands and promoted the in charge, in charge mission throughout every consumer touch point and this is just a part of, of, of uh, her uh, professional path so <laughs> this is a very interesting <laughs> <It's long. laughs> uh, this is a very interesting talk uh, first question how are you i'm great thank you <laughs> thanks so much for having me and by the way that was a powerful discussion with susanna yeah it was so first question for you you have successfully building consumer-led global uh, fashion lifestyle brands for more than 20 years your mission is to find innovative solutions for companies and help to solve old problems. This, we are living in a strange time right now. After COVID, companies are experiencing difficult issues. And so how do you deal with this and what will be your approach to help? Well, you know, I think it's, it's exactly what you guys are doing right now in terms of having this tech week and, you know, listening to Susanna earlier, you can tell, and we all know now, digital is here to stay. So the companies that have been more innovative, that have actually invested their capital in technology solutions that are going to help the consumer really understand the brand, the companies that have had a purpose and a mission and have been mission-led and have really been uniquely qualified to be able to engage their customers with that mission, those are the companies that are winning today. So there is a reassessment. There is a time now that, that needs to go back to say, what is the DNA of your brand? What is the DNA of your consumer? And be very consumer centric and consumer focused. Should always have been that way, but unfortunately that's not what's happened over the years where a lot of uh, you know businesses and brands deteriorated just because of different directions, different guidance that was given throughout either retailers or you know our other uh, management and you know our industry is a very inclusive very broad industry our industry employs more people than any other industry and uh, both in the US and in Europe and you know we have a really unique opportunity right now to be able to re-engage in a way that hasn't been able to be done and really kind of stop you know, a bit of the madness that we've had in terms of our industry from a seasonality standpoint, but also to take this opportunity. There's so much opportunity out there right now to be able to have access to consumers on a global basis. So first it's making sure that you understand fully and commit 
to ensuring, you know, like the Hermes example, that your brand and the DNA and the mission and purpose of that brand and the quality that you uphold is consistent and constant and you don't change. Um, that's the first thing I would say. The second thing in terms of being adaptable, being flexible, being open to innovation and open to doing things a little bit differently because there's so much out there that's available and it's available in a less expensive way than it ever has been from a technology standpoint. So there's a lot of SaaS companies that are providing great solutions to be able to, to have entrepreneurs and to have you know enterprise level companies all utilize their products so that they can actually be closer to the consumer. And ultimately, I think that you know one of the things and the reasons I'm talking here is ultimately we have an opportunity now to upskill and reskill our talent. And it is time we need to make changes. We've had an acceleration in the last year that we haven't seen in decades. And it's an experience now that many aren't prepared for. So we need to go back and really help from a learning and development standpoint to be able to give more guidance, to, to give everyone, regardless of what department, what function, they are a part of within their organization, but give everyone access to understanding the new future and the new world of retail. Thank you very much also for your optimism. And I think that, that yeah, that, that, that's the future we, we hope to see. As former CEO, this is the, the second question for you. As former CEO of Diane von Fustenberg, you support financial decision and boost several brands. What is your mantra in business? Well, you know, things have changed over time and, you know, one is as a leader, you hope to be able to uh, make decisions that are going to help and benefit not only the company, but the individuals working in the company. So what I try to focus on is really, number one, being consumer focused in terms of a company and organization to being people focused so that the people within the organization have opportunity, they learn they get skills to be able to grow and that they're as engaged with the company and the, and the business and the mission so that you know we're only as good as the people around us. So I think that's another major part of what leadership is, is ensuring that everyone around us that at all levels is as engaged and is aware. So communication is extremely important to make sure that everyone knows what the initiatives are, what the objectives are, what the expectations are, and to give them the right resources and right tools to be able to achieve those. Perfect. Thank you. And now let's address the main topic of this talk, uh, education. So <laughs> now you lead on a, an on-demand education company. The strength of your of organization is people. So how is changing the education field is fashion? How is it change? How is it changing? Well, first of all, I would say that higher education in general is changing. There's so much now that's online. There's a lot of access to digital education, digital platforms that exist purely for that purpose. And they've grown over time and it's only getting more and more so. And, you know, for what happened during lockdown in April of last year, when we were sitting at DVF and we had a lot of changes that were taking place all across the world in terms of store closures and et cetera. And I looked around at, at friends and colleagues and I looked at businesses that were going bankrupt and, and people that were losing their jobs. And as we all know, we've lived through that year where it's been quite tragic for some and it's also been big growth for others. But the ones that have grown are ones that were much more agile, much more digitally savvy. and. Uh, so one of the things that I looked at was, you know, I, I made, I think I put two sentences on LinkedIn about something that I wanted to do for uh, interns to give them some opportunities, even though they weren't going to have a physical experience so that they could actually have at least some sort of experience, understanding roles, responsibilities, functions, disciplines, acronyms within our industry. And I got 2,400 emails within to, like really two days. And I stopped counting after that, but I got so many emails and it ranged from people who are pre-professionals to people within the industry, to founders, CEOs saying, how can I get involved? I would love to teach. And I realized that I had this, you know, somewhat of an aha moment of saying, this is not just for interns. This is for our entire industry. We are at a pivotal cross point right now where we need to be able to help individuals that are either interested in becoming part of our fashion industry, exist within the industry and, and have been here for some time 
And we all have the opportunity to continue to learn. So it's not continuous learning, lifelong learning, to me is really important in my own personal life. But as it relates to our industry and what we can do, we have to know that things change every day. On an e-commerce, digital marketing changes every day. You can go to a Google Summit every quarter and you'll hear different vernacular from one quarter to the next. It changes very, very fast. So what was fast is now faster. And the only way for people to get caught up is to have that continuous on-demand learning. So Fashion Launchpad is, is a business that uh, is launching actually this summer. It's launching, we're doing some initial testing with some initial users in June. And then we're gonna be launching in August what that is, it's micro courses under 15 minutes taught by industry leaders. It is to help guide. It is on every single discipline, every function within the industry. You're going to hear things about what's a merchandising line plan to what's a PNL um, to acronyms, which we talk about because every single department within our organizations and in our industry has different acronyms and they're also being added and changed. And you're also going to have access to technology and understanding from the tech companies themselves what their products are, what they mean, what they do, and how to use them. And I think that's really important. You know, it's we're at this pivotal stage where there's so much technology available, but yet a lot of people don't know how to use it. We have people who are either trying to pivot their careers from one area to another, people that might not feel that they actually like the department that they're in, but really like the industry and want to be able to move. And so how do you do that? You, you really, it's about access to knowledge. Knowledge is confidence and confidence gives you a voice at the table, the ability to raise your hand. It gives you a seat at the table and then ultimately decision-making. That's my belief. And so that's why Fashion Launchpad exists. That's why we are doing it on a global basis. It's going to be app and mobile based. We're, um, we also are having some live conversations. We're gonna have corporate memberships. It's gonna be individual subscription based. So you can choose your own playlists and determine what, who you wanna to listen to and what types of disciplines you wanna follow. So, you know, in terms of education itself, it's once you get into an industry, it's very hard for people to go back and pay you know, in the States, it's $54,000 a year to go to a fashion school. It's very hard to be able to take time off and do that or go to school at nights if you have a family or on the weekends if, if you have other obligations. So this is on demand and it really is very specific. My entire purpose of this is to be able to truly give tactical takeaways from every single course that will either help you during your day or it will help you determine where you want to go and take control of your own career trajectory. So we, we, we can say that education is, in a certain way, is a synonym of future because you learn something now that you will need later. So you have to think about future if you want to, to learn something. And if you are learning, you are just in, you are in that moment in, in, in the future. So what is your dream for the fashion of tomorrow? What do you see and what you, would you like to see? I would love to see a more resilient industry an industry that doesn't have the peaks and highs and lows that, that we've seen over many years. You know, we have some very constant large corporations. And then now we've had, you know, over the past five years, seven years, we've had D2C companies that have come in and really shaken up our industry, direct to consumer brands that these founders weren't even from the industry. And they came in and said, you know, there's no rules. I'm not following rules. I, I and they've been very successful in doing it, many of them. So, you know, we have, what I would love to see is, is we have a very inclusive, very diverse industry. I would love to see this very inclusive industry be able to teach people more broadly, give them the resources and the tools to be more successful so that we can have a lot more pioneers, a lot more disruptors, and a lot more innovation that is resilient to the highs and lows and the different changes from a macroeconomic standpoint, because we, we have the ability to be that. We have the ability to be more sustainable overall, and we have the ability to be a much smarter workforce and have much more talent within our workforce that is here for the long term and doesn't necessarily need to, to change to another part of the, or another industry in general. Perfect. So my last question for you is about the retail sector that is definitely changing. So what, you, what is your advice to, to be successful? 
Well, <laughs> I, listen, I, I've been in the industry for a long time. As you started out with my own biography, it's long because I've been in it for a long time. <laughs> so uh, the, what I had the opportunity of early on was to be able to learn from different, learn across disciplines. And we haven't really had that ability in companies for quite some time now. But I think one, it makes you a much more well-rounded individual. So even though you might you know, one person might not be in operations, they might be in sales or they might be in finance and not in merchandising. It's still very important to understand all the mechanics of the industry. And, you know, it's a little bit more entrepreneurial that way. So I think, you know, number one, I would suggest having an entrepreneurial spirit, being a sponge and absorbing information, asking questions becoming more knowledgeable, get on Fashion Launchpad, listen to leaders who've been able to do it and listen to some of their takeaways and some of their advice as well. And um, work hard. You know, it's, it's, all about, it's all about putting yourself out there so that you can learn more, you can become more well-rounded, and there's going to be mistakes, but be, be kind to yourself about those mistakes because there are always going to be mistakes and we will make them, but learn from them so that you don't have to make them again. <laughs> That's certainly what I've been trying to do. Sandra, thank you very, very much. It was very interesting and inspirational. And thank you for your time and for being uh, here today with us. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day. You too. Have a good day. Goodbye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.